Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Felix and I have pretty much just completed my first playthrough of Subnautica and it was a total blast. Like there's a lot of scary moments, but you know, the exploration, everything else in there, that was super fun. But the biggest part or the biggest thing that I did throughout the uh, playthrough was I built a really large base, probably unnecessarily sized for what actually needed to be done but it was it was really fun to do and i love base building so here's a really large research base that i would like to show off a bit you know and uh just just show you around do a little base tour of what i did throughout this super long playthrough so let's start by showing off the entrance here i guess you know our little uh cyclops docking port or you know yeah, you know, that's what I would call it. We can head into our main entrance. Now, the main entrance uh, consists of just kind of a um, little uh, waiting area for our in quote reach researchers coming in and out of the base. And so, you know, you got vending machines and all their bags sitting. That was one of the main ideas as we go through this base. You know, it's kind of designed on the idea that there were a lot of researchers here and not just me losing my mind as I'm yelling under the sea. So we can head through there. We'll have a little big fish tank as kind of our grand opening, like a little showcase. Got all the fishes in there. Not a lot. I never, I never really fully filled it out, but... Man, that... That green one is kind of weird looking. Anyways. Which actually does lead into our observation area. So, for anyone who could be waiting for the Cyclops to return from the surface and, uh, you know, unload and load, you can have people just waiting in the observation room or, you know, just taking a nice look at the fish tank and just out into the sea. Which then also leads us to our section over here, which comes into our little control uh, room area to monitor all of our Cyclopses coming in and out. Now here first is little, little uh, break room, I guess, little little sleeping area for them to for our control team to take their shifts on and off. Because you, I could imagine that you'd have a lot of the team, you know, always here. Essentially, the control team to make sure that there's always somebody here to call in Cyclopses and make sure none of them, or you know, our main Cyclops, essentially Big Bertha. You know, doesn't run into any issues and everyone can get in and out safely from the Cyclops. So, you know, here's our control room and would have employees monitoring that, contacting the Cyclops and making sure everything's okay. And then they also get a really great view of the dock and make sure nothing's wrong and everything is okay with that. So once we get back down from the uh, little observation control room area, we actually first enter our reception area. Because, you know, as you enter the base, especially for any new researchers that could be coming into our research base for, for the first time, you know, you got to get your ID, got to make sure that everything is good, and that you're registered into our system. And, you know, we, we can keep track of all the people in the base and, you know, make sure that there's nothing wrong going on. So just simple little reception area here, which then goes into a back checkup area. So as everyone kind of screens through, we'll have a little doctor here to uh, make sure make sure that you, you aren't crazy infected or anything or the disease isn't hasn't spread and is really, really bad that's on this planet. They get checked up and, you know, any other kind of uh, big major health issues can get sorted out right in this little check area, which then once you finally get through, we get to this kind of area. So this is technically, it's weird how it works because of how it lined up over there, but this is, I guess, in a way, our second floor in reality, which we do have a third floor, which goes up to our living quarters, our offices, and a research lab. But before we check that out, and then obviously our base floor, which has the clinic, a mess hall, and the whole energy department. But we can check out the library because it is just here. And it's just, you know, nice casual place for all of our kind of data storage and well, just any kind of books 
And you know, I don't know, they do have books under the water, <laughs> underwater here at a research base like this, especially one in the future, but maybe we are just storing a whole bunch of PDAs and they go in here and all the researchers can spend some time, get some new knowledge or just, you know, have some recreational reading. It's a really, I actually really like this, uh, this library. This room used to be super empty for a long time, so it was kind of cursed of how empty it was for so long, but finally got uh, the library put in, and yeah, it was really expensive. Used a lot of resources for this one. The lockers go through a lot. Let's go upstairs. We'll just cover this kind of area. So over here, we've got our water filtration. Nothing too fancy. Thought about third, putting a third one in there and just never happened. I guess two was enough. Never had a problem with water, so it was more or less fine. We did have an abundance of salt. And then over here, just the scanner room. In order to uh, make sure, you know, or do scanner things. And get all of our materials as we need. That was super helpful when I actually figured out how the HUD works. And I started using that, so that was great. I guess I'm gonna go downstairs. We're just gonna complete this whole left side of this sectional part of the base, which we have our bioreactor, which I guess is inactive right now. I haven't filled it back up, but we do have two bioreactors. And then if we continue this way past our, essentially the backup extra bioreactor, you will get to our reactor control room. You can see what some of our Employees are watching, looking at the reactor control room. One, probably not doing the job they are supposed to be doing, but in the future, I don't think there's needing to be too much monitoring of the reactor. I guess it's safe enough. But we did ensure that it is fully safe and secure, so this is where most of the reinforcements of the base kind of lie. And it gives uh, a lot of hole integrity. And then we have our reactor, which we've actually... We've gone through one. The at the at this point, I think we've gone through like four control rods through this playthrough, so it's been a while. I don't know how long they last, but I finally decided to fill it up with just four. And you know what? They uh, haven't gone through all of them yet, so that's a good sign. As we go, come back through here. This is just this was actually my like starting area of the base where I used to do all crafting and you know storage and things just where where it all began essentially just with this one observatory and it slowly expanded from here and then out now it's a little just a kind of workshop essentially maybe some team is working uh and building extra materials for the power department you know any extra nuts and bolts that they may need kind of just like a fabrication room or workshop for them that was the original crafting room but now it's been kind of converted as i moved out let's go through this side so coming into here this is actually a mess hall essentially cafeteria a bit this is a kitchen kind of stores our water and food you know we can take a little bit of water why not make sure i don't die throughout this tour that'd be good and we've got you know, stored for food and water. I've got, you know, just a couple of nutrient bricks and Reginalds in there. Nothing much. And then any other extra storage I would have needed, which is like salt. That's where I kind of make all the food from that little fabricator. It's kind of like an oven a little bit. And then here's the uh, cafeteria where everyone can sit back and relax. And then you have George, Bill, and Steve, the classic trio. They're always in here just having counsel essentially talking about whatever they talk about and I don't know they're probably cutting up in here to be honest and then you know some some daytime television for anyone who's in the cafeteria you know, watch some television while you eat and then while we continue through the base this way you will actually now reach our clinic nice little waiting area also some more daytime television some nice game shows I it's a common one I feel that's is found in doctor waiting rooms and then you know you have a little reception here make sure everyone's checked in ids i guess they need and then nice little snack machine and coffee for everyone in the waiting room too so while you come through here this is actually the little back floor kind of where you have everyone who needs to get checked up 
I kind of wish I had like curtains or something to cover them because you can kind of see everyone getting checked up. But, you know, we yeah, sometimes I guess you use your imagination around here. And just a little back office here. Maybe the head doctor can sit in here and file in patients and do any little extra paperwork that they need to file and like prescriptions, maybe things like that. So just a little back cons or office for them. We'll come back all the way around to our now little base floor here. And this is uh, where the main fabrication room now lies and mostly storage. I've got all these lockers for all minerals in the game. Here's a little like locker room essentially for anyone preparing to head out into the ocean. Just a, our story or like exploration and uh, resource gathering teams will load up and put on their wetsuits, store any extra items they need, and then come out and here's our moon bay where we have Lil C Mop Jr. Doc still safe from last time's adventure. Haven't lost Lil C Mop Jr. has made it through the entire adventure thus far, as well as unlimited power, which does have a Leviathan kill count of one. Fortunately we tried to get a second one. Didn't happen. He just ran off from us and we couldn't find it. But Here's also the prawn. Same thing over here. Just a little locker room for uh, more preparation work. So as we move back, we'll actually move into the research, the main research lab of this base. We've got some like smaller fishies that you may be doing some research on. We've got plants, even though I've only put ferns here. Then the major tank that could have stored something else, but instead we have a Reginald overpopulation problem, which has slowly just turned into our food supply. But, you know, we're re researching, like, the bones and the skeletons we have found of all the various sea monsters that you would be kind of finding the data about. Just lots of desks and counters for all the scientists to do their work. And then over in here, it's our greenhouse essentially, so much more uh, plant research and then also our food supply in general. Which then gives us a little access way back here. Just one of our extra uh, ways to get out. Plus, we've got all the outdoor crops growing, a couple of solar panels. Those were all the solar panels to kind of start the base and I've just moved them over. So they aren't as necessary anymore, but didn't think of getting rid of them. So they just, they're there. And then, yeah, pretty much. I only have things that I thought I really needed to grow. So it's not, it's not, it doesn't encompass like everything, but more or less the main plants that I thought were important for me to have. So now we can go through the third floor, which is kind of where our main living area and offices tend to be so here's a little break room for the office workers come here get some snacks get some coffee then we have a little office here kind of discussion table some offices i absolutely love putting all these planters around filling all the plants and if you continue on through this hallway through the break room as well that hallway would have also led over here so Kind of checking this out so you have multiple ways to get over here but it all connects back up through this main entrance where we have our kind of a simple living area for just like basic staff essentially with room 107 just a little office here for them and then two bedrooms and this is a simple dorm style kind of bedroom i guess then you got the whole lounge area where they can relax and watch some television. Also a little kitchen with some coffee machines. And if we had a stove or something, which I guess would be kind of dangerous underwater, but I guess a little area for them to make some quick dinners and lunches for them while they're just, you know, near their rooms. And then they can also relax. I don't know, play some card games or something. Keep entertained. And then over here, we've just got a nice other little connector area just designed to uh have more people kind of sit down and relax as they need to which then also goes into my room this is my quarters here a little fancier as being the captain 
Welcome to the main living area. We've got the kitchen. We've got sign that I feel is always in every place, which I think is funny. It's more, it's a, it's more a meme. We've got a research lab coming up here. My own little personal research lab. Some plants, you know, just computer as well. And then my main bedroom. I can stare at the ocean and also, yeah, I get a really beautiful view of the <laughs> Neptune rocket bay. It's not that great actually. And then we've got like all the extra little knickknacks in here. We've got the little Corvette, which I don't know why is in the game, I'll be honest, but hey, cool car. And also some more daytime television. I should have added more, more game shows around the base. I feel like that's one big thing our base just randomly has. We love game shows around here. We can come down to Leviathan, which is our bar that we've made for all the living area people. You know, everyone can come down and relax while they're off work. Because that area is pretty much where all of our personal rooms are. And so everyone can come in to the bar and get some nice drinks and things. Kind of stop thinking about all the crazy ocean sea monsters that want to kill us. And then continuing on to this way, we can now see the rest of the living quarters. In which we have, you know, some dedicated rooms here. And a lot of nice signs to dictate that and tell us where we need to go because without those signs i get quite lost in this base or i used to it was a maze putting everything together i won't lie but we've got some personal rooms dedicated to just some wonderful people who hung around and helped me out gave me some suggestions while i was building the base so i you know really appreciate that all the people who were were super nice came in and chatted and yeah, gave, gave me some good inspiration and some good help to uh, put some more finishing touches around this base. We got some room here. There's another room here. Also this radio that will never get built because um, the landlord, we blame the landlord. It's totally not me and I'm too lazy just to build it. So now by lore, that radio is just always broken. Got like a mirror here to look into the room. Nice little computer that's just viewing their work on what they do. And absolutely love these little personal rooms. You can look out. Absolutely not really see much, I'll be honest, but you can still see it to the ocean. And in an aquarium. And that just kind of fills up these little personal rooms here, which as we move back, we'll just uh, we'll finish by checking out the other personal rooms on this section. we got another one here, some more computers, table for, for like board games and stuff in their room and nice little relaxation, all these benches. And then our last little, or actually not our last, we still have another one to go, but second to last kind of personal room here. They, they got a coffee machine, why not? You know what, they like coffee, so they put a little personal one inside. And this one, you know, I kind of imagine this is, this room, unfortunately, is kind of like a, uh, li living by like a train track or an airport. They do get to see the Cyclops come in every single time. I don't know how loud it is, but you know, I imagine it's the future. We probably have like some sound dampening technology in the walls. It's probably fine, I, I, I believe. Uh, that's what I'm going to tell myself to not feel so bad. I put their room right next to the Cyclops docking port. And that concludes kind of our living area. And I'll actually go and check out one more area of the living. So as we check back through this area, or these hallways, we can head down, which is our maintenance tube, essentially. It leads all the way back to the fabrication, kind of down the line. But we do have one little hidden room back here dedicated to a little botanica. Thanks, Shadow. Where they can grow their plants, craft up little little medicines, essentially homebrew some remedies that maybe if some people don't want to go to the doctor for something tiny, they can just do some uh, some medicinal ones right from our botanica, and also uh, 
We believe that doll is cursed. We believe Timmy's soul has been sucked out by the owner of this room, and we're not going to ask questions. So we're going to slowly back out of this room. We're going to shut the door and pretend we didn't see what the heck happened with Timmy. And then once we get back through this hallway, we can just kind of run back through. There isn't much. Just another little break room for, for the maintenance team because this is kind of like a tube underneath the base where the maintenance team can avoid the bigger crowd upstairs so they can get through each section of the base kind of or from the power department all the way to the living quarters quick and easy without running into any traffic. And then here's a little just extra, extra like excess storage as well as our battery charging department or like area with our fuel cells for the cyclops when we needed it don't need it anymore because we had the thermal uh charging and we just kind of used it like a tesla car charger where we'd park our cyclops on on a thermal vent but we do have the battery charger here which has obviously been very useful especially how much i've had to recharge the habitat tool how big this base is and then leads back into the fabrication room now we're going to come all the way back to the living quarters side back through this little hallway here because now we can uh what we skipped out on was going upstairs to some simple offices for people who are doing whatever other general work happens at this base so i'm just keeping the base maintenance Basic necessities of the base, I, I would assume, is happening in the, in these offices away from the more intensive research team. So probably like the financial teams and things like that, keeping the base afloat. And then we just have two offices connected up together. Nothing, nothing too fancy. Just some com computers for everyone to work on. I also get to see Cyclops and... Things like that. And it leads right back into our... To our little dormitory area. So everyone in the living quarters has easy access to their to their offices. And then it all returns back to the other offices as well. So everyone can quickly and easily get to their workplace. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this quick base tour. It was an absolutely fun time getting through this playthrough and, well, doing this whole extreme base, essentially. If you're ever interested in seeing me lose my mind as I uh, had to go on like 50 resource trips and get this base built, all the VODs are on this channel. And if you ever want to catch me live playing whatever game comes next, maybe we'll do some more building in Below Zero at some point, you can always come and check me out at twitch.tv slash felixsoji. But this is the end of this video. My name is Felix, and I hope to see you later. Bye!